All right. Hey, good af good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to listen uh, to our talk about envoy compression subsystem e evolution. Uh, in our talk, we give a uh, give the long give, give the story of a uh, kind of long but very successful project to redesign the new envoy compression subsystem with with some great community collaboration, and then discuss some of its features and and future plans. Uh, but before getting started, let us introduce uh, ourselves first. My name is uh, Mikko Ylinen. I'm a software engineer at Intel's open source cloud software engineering team, working on device enabling for Kubernetes and, and cloud native applications. In, in this project, I've mostly been coaching Dimitri, who did all the heavy lifting, but uh, I've also a few uh, Envoy contributions myself, uh, mostly on the OpenSSL side of things. My name is uh, Jose Nino, and I am an engineer at Lyft, uh, where I have worked on networking relating, related technologies for the past uh, four years. Uh, I was part of the initial open source team uh, with Envoy and worked on server side technologies uh, for the first two and a half years that um, I was at Lyft. And then for the last year and a half, I've been working on a related project called Envoy Mobile, uh, which we'll discuss a little bit today. Next, I also want to introduce you to Dimitri. He is not in the presentation with us today, but his contribution to, to the work that we're discussing today deserves a, a special recognition. Moving on uh, to the story, how, how, how the Envoy compression rework uh, got started and uh, what we learned uh, from, from the process. Um, but let's get uh, started with, with some common terminology. And there are lots of variations used, acro uh, used uh, across uh, di different code bases. So we wanted to explain the ones used in, in this presentation and uh, in, in the Envoy, Envoy code base. Um, within the compression subsystem overall, we have uh, both compressors and, and decompressors. And they uh, uh, compress and decompress data, of course, naturally. So. Um, and then let's, uh, next, uh, let's uh, take a look what the HTTP gzip filter in, in Envoy does. And uh, on the request path on the left hand side uh, that the client uh, sends a request, the filter on, on Envoy uh, looks for matching a gzip accept encoding header. And uh, the filter deletes it. And, and forwards the request uh, uh, to the upstream service. And um, when the filter receives the response data, it, it compresses the data using the gzip algorithm. And finally, then Envoy proxies the gzip gzip response back back to the client. So this is this is how it how it works and uh, uh, basically it is uh, limited to only. Uh, and a re response com compression. Uh, this all works well if you are interested in providing compression based on just like one existing one 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 implementation of of, of GC. But uh, then you might ask, what if, what if you want to modify that implementation, say uh, using hardware accelerated uh, GC, for instance, or what if you want to use a different uh, compression algorithm altogether, like uh, broadly, broadly compression algorithm? Or uh, finally, what if you may also want to decompress uh, the data at the, at the proxy, la uh, proxy layer? These were all the questions that remained uh, and which we kind of asked ourselves. Uh, and uh, that's kind of the reason why we uh, got uh, started with the, with the work. Uh, that uh, we did here. Um, well, let's look at uh, some of the existing advantages in, in, in Envoy. Um, and these were kind of the things that allowed us to, to start thinking uh, the redesign a more comprehensive way and uh, design the comprehensive uh, com compression subsystem for, for Envoy. 
<clears throat> first of all, Envoy is open source, and uh, in, in, in our team, basically, our motto is uh, upstream for us. We, we wanted to propose changes to the upstream and, and, and get them accepted, and with open source, uh, this is easily, they should be easily doable. Um, second thing is Envoy um, has a very clear abstract interfaces, for instance, for compression, we had these very basic, uh, very basic interfaces for compressing and, and de decompressing data, and that uh, is just uh, provided uh, through through the data buffers. And then third, and uh, perhaps the, the most important point, Envoy has a very mature extension uh, system that allows people to implement their own own logic for for very well-defined uh, extension points. And we, can, we, we thought that perhaps com compression libraries could be the first class extension points for Envoy. Uh, so with, with that, we just uh, <laughs> took, took the time to prepare the initial pull request uh, to generalize the existing GZIP filter into a compression uh, algorithm ag agnostic filter. Uh, Originally, we were, expect, we were expecting very smooth process in, in upstreaming, maybe with just uh, a, a few comments, review comments that we needed to, to address, and then we should be done and, and complete with this, with this con contribution. But uh, uh, it did not go like that. We, everything did not go as, as we expected, and at, at some point, as you can see, a long time since we originally started the pull, pull request, the work simply simply got uh, stalled, and we did not see a path getting getting the contribution accepted. And myself and, and Dimitri we were like pretty puzzled. So why is it uh, so hard to get this accepted? Especially because uh, uh, the contribution, the implementation was meeting all, all the needs that many others also had asked in in, in the past. And at, at, at this point, we were uh, we were even like considering going with with a plan plan B and uh, in implementing what we wanted for the hardware accelerator, just using custom external filters that uh, meets meets our needs. Um, but then, uh, luckily, the, the work was uh, spotted by Michael and Jose from Lyft somewhere. Um, I think in February timeframe this year, and that they had seen the work and they also had the need for Envoy decompression in, in Envoy mobile to, to keep their public APIs with, with compressed responses and then do decompression in, on, on the client, client side. So it's uh, it's not always just open source that makes these contributions possible, but especially for bigger fe features like this uh, con contribution that we had, it's really about uh, the community and how, how the community collaborates to, together to kind of complete the, the, the last mile and getting things accepted upstream. And uh, uh, what what we learned uh, from from all all, all this. Uh, uh, during the way to, to while while getting this this ac accepted and uh, merged in in, uh, in upstream. So um, one observation is that uh, sometimes it's best if you just share the big picture, the kind of the big big, uh, big design idea in in a shared document uh, to make the conversation possible, and then. Uh, eventually create the kind of consensus uh, uh, about the, the changes and, and the way forward before before investing a lot of time in um, in, in working on, on, on POCs and then scratching the work and starting all over. But this document it also helps to build the community behind the work, which is uh, super important as, as we just discussed previously. Uh, and one other thing we also learned that uh, sometimes all these open source contributions, they, they need or, uh, a lot of patience and that uh, don't give up too easily if, if there's some delay in getting your changes reviewed and, and accepted. Good. So um, 
next, uh, I think we have Jose uh, uh, going to talk about uh, generalizing the, the envoy, envoy compression. All right, thank you, Miko. Uh, so now that we have that uh, background context um, of what existed in the envoy compression space with the specific GSIP filter, uh, second, what were some of the use cases that were not possible uh, with that previous implementation? Uh, and then uh, what advantages existed that could make a general compression, compression system possible in Envoy and how all that work was possible thanks to not only a cross-company collaboration between us at Lyft and uh, the folks at Intel, but uh, really a cross-continent collaboration with people in the United States and in Finland. Uh, so let's dive into uh, what we actually did in general, generalizing this compression system. So the first obvious thing when looking at the GSIP filter is that uh, while this is what it looks from the outside, if you look under the hood, what you have is a filter in two parts, the HTP filter part and then the compressor part. So the if, if we zoom in here, the HTP filter part deals with the HTP level concerns like looking for the accept encoding header, uh, like Miko was saying, or replacing the data frames uh, with the compressed data. And then uh, the filter itself uses the GSIP compressor, compressor uh, which it itself is the one that is compressing the data buffers using the GSIP algorithm. So uh, going back to the existing advantages, what became evident uh, when looking at the filter this way is that there was nothing specific in the filter uh, that require the compressor to behave in a certain way, to use GSIP to compress, uh, because it used this very simple interface that we had seen before. A compressor only has one function, it compresses. So there was a very clear delineation of where we could divide the filter. And then plug in a compressor library, regardless of the uh, compression algorithm that it used. So now that we had this generic compressor uh, working within the generic HTTP compressor filter, uh, we could raise the compressor itself to be a first class extension in Envoy. And so uh, this is done using the classes that we see here, uh, where we have a class that derives from the config uh, type factory class. And then every particular implementation uh, of, of a compressor library derives from that in turn. So now our GSIP compressor, uh, or perhaps our broadly compressor in the future, derived from the name compressor library config class. And then the compressor filter uses this compressor factory class, the generic compressor factory class, uh, to create compressors uh, with which to actually compress the data. In other words, uh, we achieved uh, the first of our goals. Uh, we are now able to have any number of different compressor schemes in Envoy without each having to implement an HTTP filter themselves. We can just plug in any of them into the generic compressor filter. So whether it is a GSIP compressor or a Broadly compressor, or like our friends at, at Intel, ha hardware accelerated GSIP. All right, so on to our second goal. What about a full compression system? Uh, one that can both compress and decompress data. Well, that was easier now that we had a generic implementation of a compressor filter. We use the same principle of abstraction using the generic decompressor class and created a generic decompressor filter that used a pluggable generic decompressor, thus creating a fully pluggable HTTP decompressor filter. So parallel to the compressors as first class extension points in Envoy, we created decompressors as first class extension points in Envoy. Thus, we paved the way uh, for having not only a GCP decompressor, but also having any number of decompressors uh, to parallel the, comp the compressors that we were adding. So now we have a complete generic end-to-end -end compression solution powered by Envoy, where service B can send a response, and then the HTTP compressor filter can compress that response, which arrives to service A, and in turn 
its HTTP decompressor filter can decompress the response before proxying it to the service itself. So as you can see, compression is completely done in the network layer without having to involve any product engineers, owners of service A or service B. All right, so this is what the Envoy compression extension tree looks like. Uh, the common directory implements the generic compressor and decompressor factory base classes that all compressors and decompressors derive from. And then each particular compression scheme has its own tree where they have a, a compressor and a decompressor and potentially a common base class that derive from you know, some scheme specific functionality. So in Envoy currently, uh, we have the GZIP compressor and decompressor. Uh, but as we have been saying, the beauty of this first class uh, extension is that um, any number of compression schemes can be added, whether uh, added upstream to the, the main Envoy repo or in your private build of Envoy. All right, so that's a whirlwind tour of uh, how we generalize decompression. Uh, but most exciting, we want to present some of the case studies uh, that were enabled thanks to, the, to this generalized compression scheme. And um, uh, the first one being, oh, sorry, Miko, go ahead. Yeah, so I should just, um, thanks, Jose. So I was about to say that our first uh, case study talks about implementing hardware accelerated com compression for, for Envoy. Um, so some, uh, a little bit about the rationale for why, why doing hardware accelerated compression. Typically hardware acceleration can bring uh, several benefits to, to your application, for instance, um, as you know, being like very time consuming uh, process, it might make sense to offload all this com compression processing to a dedicated uh, coprocessor. Sometimes even like, uh, a hardware that is completely optimized for this particular task. Uh, and then the added benefit with that is that then you can free CPU cycles for, for something more important that runs on, on, on the main, main CPU. And then uh, the, the coprocessor, uh, the accelerated coprocessor doing all the, all the, all the work. Um, in our case, we have implemented a reference uh, implementation using this uh, Envoy compression subsystem for an for an Intel Quick Assist technology card. Uh, it's a, it's kind of dedicated card optimized for crypto and uh, com compression compression processing. Um, this implementation adds uh, QAT com compression com compressor. Uh, we have it uh, implemented in, in an external repository, as Jose mentioned, it is also with, with uh, the Envoy extension mechanism possible to add your custom implementations easily uh, living in, in their own external repositories. Um, the QAT compressor we have uh, implemented uh, uses uh, a framework what what we have called qat zip and then the qat zip then directly uses the, the qat hardware abstraction layer and, and the driver and sending out all the compression requests to uh, to the dedicated uh, co-processor we have it right now we have it only for uh, com compressors basically we are able to compress the data and what we what we are working on right now is that we're just uh, kind of adding, uh, looking to add, almost there, adding the decompressor piece uh, uh, for the hardware acceleration as well. Based on our our experiments, this this speeds up com com compression. Uh, in in addition to the fact that we are also able to free CPU cycles for for something else. All right, so thank you for that case study. Uh, there are some published results uh, and we will share the link uh, with the presentation slides. So now let's talk about the Envoy Mobile use case. I want to first give a quick overview of the goal of the Envoy Mobile project and uh, what it is as a baseline 
context for this case study. Uh, this diagram shows an increasingly common topology in network distributed systems these days. I'm, I'm sure many of you at your companies uh, have a setup similar to this, where Envoy is deployed as a universal network primitive, uh, where it deals with the majority, if not all the network traffic in a company's architecture. However, my team at Lyft recognized that we had left an important hop outside the ecosystem because traditionally we've treated mobile clients as independent from the backend infrastructure and we have built unique solutions to what was assumed to be a unique space. So we identified a technology gap because in spite of all the work that we had done server side, we saw that three nines of reliability at the server side is meaningless if the user of a mobile client is only able to complete the desired product flows a fraction of the time. So what we want client side are the same guarantees that we had server side. So that is what we created Envoy Mobile. We propose that we don't need to treat the mobile clients any different, at least from the network perspective, uh, as we do uh, with the server side infrastructure. So this is, what my this is why my team built this over the last year. We have built bindings into Envoy that allow us to run the code base as a native library in a mobile client application. And so we have great documentation and a ton of material about the project. So if you're interested in the project in itself, uh, please uh, feel free to take a look. It's also all open source. But today we are here to talk about compression and in particular show you uh, with, uh, how with Envoy Mobile uh, in the client and with Envoy at the edge of our infrastructure and with this new generic compression subsystem, we were able to do some things that would have been too resource intensive in the past. So compression at the edge is particularly important because payload sizes can lead to performance degradation under adverse network conditions, uh, which are usually experienced uh, by mobile phones making public API requests to your infrastructure. So as I mentioned before, uh, Lyft compresses all responses at the edge, uh, and we wanted to have at least the same behavior uh, when we migrated off of our uh, old uh, client stacks to Envoy Mobile. So in the past, uh, before Envoy Mobile, implementing compression at the edge required three different code bases, one for the edge proxy, one for the Android client, and one for the iOS client. So this might be okay if we just wanted to put you know, one compression algorithm in place and just leave it be. But my team started asking questions very similar to uh, our colleagues at Intel. What if we wanted to squeeze better compression and, and does better performance with different compression schemes? What about bidirectional compression, where we not only compress responses, but also requests? And these questions quickly become intractable if for every variation that we want to test, we need to implement the same code three times, server, Android, and iOS. And that is really one of the main reasons we embarked on the Envoy Mobile project to begin with, uh, because by using the same code base everywhere with Envoy Mobile in the client and Envoy at the edge, we are able to have only one implementation for every new technology we want to experiment with, affording us on parallel consistency and extensibility at a fraction of the engineering hours required in the past. So in other words, now we do have truly a true universal uh, network primitive that we can experiment with and why we became so interested in collaborating with our colleagues at Intel in this uh, compression subsystem. All right, uh, so let's see how we brought compression back to the edge uh, with only one implementation and without involving either our client or server engineers. So before we go into compression, let's look at the request flow uh, using Envoy Mobile. Very similar to Envoy on the server, Envoy Mobile proxies requests from the client to the edge proxy upstream, and then the edge proxies uh, that request, uh, that receive that request further uh, that proxy that to the upstream service. Similarly, on the response path, the edge receives a response, sends it to the client using Envoy Mobile, which in turn surfaces that to the application via callbacks in the library. All right. So the first step in enabling compression is installing the new compressor filter with a particular compressor library on the edge nodes. At this point, nothing changes in the client. The client sends a request, which Envoy Mobile proxies to the edge. 
But now the edges compressor filter searches for the accept encoding header, which allows the filter to know if it should compress the response for this request. But the header is missing. So it simply forwards the request. And then when the re response comes back, it does nothing with it and passes it back to Envoy Mobile. But now we can install the decompressor filter in Envoy Mobile. And here I want to highlight how easy that was. We didn't have a filter before, and then boom, we installed the filter. So easy. Well, jokes aside, uh, this is easy because Envoy Mobile is Envoy. So we can install the same filters that we use in Envoy on the server, including the decompressor filter. All right, so now that we have the decompressor, the client sends a request, and the decompressor adds the accept encoding header. So when the compressor at the edge searches for that header, it finds it. So then the, compre decompress the compressor strips the header and lets the Envoy proxy the request. But thanks to the accept encoding header, the compressor is now primed to compress the response because it knows that the client is going to be able to handle this compressed response. So when the response comes back, the compressor compresses the response and in turn, the decompressor filter decompresses it before sending it back to the application, all without the client or the server engineer being involved at all. Nice. So, uh, we were really excited with this first zero touch implementation and we started thinking what else could we do at the edge with Envoy Mobile in the client and with Envoy in the server. Uh, so potentially we could have bidirectional compression. So instead of this setup where only the response gets compressed to be sent across the edge, we could have a more complicated setup, uh, but it is a setup where both the client and the server have both a compressor and a decompressor filter, um, allowing both requests and responses to be sent compressed across the wire. Uh, but we could you know, do more than that. Not only uh, are we allowed to do bidirectional compression now, but we could also run experiments with different compression schemes and fine tune our compression settings to achieve less degradation at the edge and ultimately higher success with our public APIs. So this is uh, the Envoy Mobile case study, and uh, this very, very flexible compression system has really enabled us uh, to pursue a lot of avenues that would have been intractable uh, due to the engineering hours required beforehand. So those two were the big use cases that drove compression uh, forward with a cross-company, cross-continent collaboration to think for. However, we have many things planned for the compression space in Envoy. First, even though the new compressor filter has been around since the 1.15 release, the old GZIP filter is still there. We plan to remove it from Envoy by the next release, 1.17. Second is Brotly support, which is currently being worked on by Dimitri at Intel. Third is having bi a bidirectional compressor. Bidirectional decompressor has already been implemented by myself, but to have a fully bidirectional end-to-end -end compression system, we're missing request compression. This is very easy to add in the compressor filter in case anyone in the audience is interested. Having these pluggable compression libraries enables us to apply compression to other parts of Envoy. Your ideas are welcome on which parts exactly can benefit from it. Lastly, it is worth mentioning that the performance of GZIP compression in Envoy still has room for improvement. For example, GCIP compression in Nginx works about 25% faster than in Envoy when configured similarly. These are just some of the items we have planned in, comp in the compression roadmap, but we can't wait for seeing what other interests the community has for this new subsystem. Oh, uh, that's uh, that's all we had uh, for today. Thanks for, for listening and, and watching us and looking forward to see you in the community.